Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a pleasure to speak in front of this audience. So in cell therapy, the ultimate goal is repair of function. And maybe we can look into the nature to see how nature solves this problem in uh, the sense of the zebrafish. If you cut the apex of an, of an zebrafish, it can be repaired. The amputation side is uh, there is a clot in the beginning and some myocardial progenitor cells spread in. And then another type of stem cells spread in. It's the epicardial derived cells. And then it gets a, gets a stable uh, construct in the apex. And after five weeks or so, it is a full regeneration of heart function and shape. This was tried in stem cell transplantation, first in small animals. This is representative echo of, an, of a mouse before MI and then severely dysfunctioning after a myocardial infarction. And finally, um, after cell therapy, the function was up to normal again. Actually, what we see in our daily practice is a little bit different. It's very hard to imagine that this huge anterior infarction will be fully repaired by stem cell transplantation. So my first conclusion before I started is that humans are absolutely no rodents and by far no zebrafish. So in my talk, I want to give you some very short insights into general considerations and then... Um, say something about the existing clinical stem cell trials, uh, have some few words on the aging stem cell, and give some possible solutions how the elderly can profit from stem cell transplantation in future. So y you will hear a lot of um, the elderly patient population. We know that there is more elderly patients coming to our wards. It's more heart failure patients as well. And it's also more therapeutic options we have. On the other hand, we have limited resources. So one thing is that in theory, cell therapy would be a very good concept or an optimal concept for the elderly if it is less ex invasive, less expensive, and can augment cardiac function in those patients. There was a hype in the beginning of uh, the century around stem cell transplantation. When first um, papers were published, like this from Orlik, uh, where they um, transplanted bone marrow cells in the myocardial infarction in mouse, and they saw new onset myocardium inside this infarction area and a very nice um, recovery of function in those animals. And this initiated a lot of trials, like this BOOST trial, uh, where bone marrow stem cells were applied through catheter-based in uh, acute myocardial infarction patients. And the function, in, as con compared to control group in this bone marrow cell group, went a little bit high. So there was some enthusiasm in the beginning, but everybody was unsure how the mechanism of those cells is. Some thought those cells undergo a trans differentiation. They really become cardiomyocytes and have a pumping function. Others believe that other mechanisms have to be involved, like neovascularization, paracrine effects. And those teams were a little bit fighting about what is the um, actual mechanism. Those two, those two, co oh, the competing teams sat together in one laboratory and actually found the solution that the transplanted bone marrow cells can undergo transdifferentiation. This is the transplanted cells are labeled in green with GFP and the red is the myocardi myocardium. And so there is some cells that have both, both possessions. They're green, the transplanted cells, and they're cardiac cells. But it was also found out that those are very unlikely events where those cells undergo a differentiation into cardiac cells. And this, the observed effect of a better function in the animals is not related to this new myocardial cells. So there have to be indirect mechanisms by 
bone marrow cells. The other cells used were skeletal myoblasts. Uh, most of you are aware of this, that there uh, has been a hope those cells can augment function. But in the phase two trial, they saw that the, this is the change of uh, left ventricular ejection fraction in the placebo group, and it was the same in the placebo group and in both treatment groups. So the skeletal myoblasts do not add um, effect in the sense of ejection fraction. And there's a lot of other stem cell trials. I don't want to go into more detail about this and don't want to bother you with it because it is very different cell types. It's very different patients. It's the, the indications are different. The route of delivery are different. Uh, so the endpoint and the results were, of course, different. Um, actually, you can find um, more than 300 of those trials at the moment. Um, and there's no specific trial to investigate the effect on the elderly. So the topic of my talk is a little bit um, difficult. I only found one abstract that concentrates on the elderly with, um, well, minor effects on the heart. So let me say something about the cells, the autologous cells that have to be used in the elderly. Older individuals get older because their stem cells as the regenerative source are impaired. They are impaired in the sense of proliferation ability and uh, the differentiation ability. And that is true for most stem cells that are currently used in clinical trials. For the mesenchymized stem cells, we found it uh, in our own research when we, when we identified those cells in the neonatal thymus. These are the cells. And uh, the cells from the neonates have a markedly better proliferation than uh, those from older individuals. And also the differentiation potential is much better for the neonates, the chondrogenic, adipogenic, and cardiogenic lineage differentiation. And this finding was uh, also um, made for bone marrow cells and, and so on. Um, also for the endothelial progenitor cells which have been used, it has been shown that age has a, a negative effect because the number is decreasing, the proliferation is decreasing, and the migration capacity is decreasing. Skeletal myoblasts, the same. The number is decreasing. The shape is a little bit different, and so the differentiation capacity is impaired. And the same effects to hematopoietic stem cells. The all, so all cells that can be used autologous are impaired in the elderly. So what are possible solutions for this problem? There is the possibility to transplant those cells. I don't think that elderly people will really profit from it, but it has been shown that it is possible that the elderly heart itself can be repaired by stem cells. Um, that is uh, only shown in the animal, but there seems to be a possibility. I think it is unlikely to happen with those autologous cells. The other possibility is to take allogenic cells from uh, juvenile patients. It has been shown that very young cells do not initiate uh, an immune response. If you look at this, it's a mixed lymphocyte reaction where you put um, allogenic dendritic cells to lymphocytes and you look how the proliferation is, um, is done. And if you have normal dendritic cells, you have a mark increase of, lymph, uh, of the lymphocytes. What you do not have with the mesenchymal stem cells, let's say from the thymus, from the bone marrow, or from adipose tissue. So there is a big hope that mesenchymal stem cells are not affected by, um, if you transplant in allogenic um, fashion without I immunosuppression. And it, there is some indications that this is also true for umbilical cord cells um, and for more pluripotent cells. Another way to solve the problem of the aging cell is manipulate the cells. 
what we did in our laboratory, or what we are currently doing, is transfection of autologous cells. We have skeletal myoblasts that are transfected with uh, genes for VGF, for example, or other factors that we think that are possible or that are positive for um, the remodeling process. And we actually did a scaffold seeding with those cells, transplanted those scaffolds on, um, on the heart of, or on myocardial infarction hearts in the animal, and then had a functional um, workout. And we saw that we could apply a sort of cytokine factory with those cells. They exert a lot of, um, a lot of factors that are positively uh, affecting function in, in those hearts. Some people think that it, they can even go further and engineer more potent cell lines. The master example for it is the nuclear transfer or cloning, where you have, remove the genetic material of oocytes and then uh, incorporate or replace this with a nucleus from an adult donor cell, which, ha which results in a pluripotent cell. And this concept was somehow upgraded uh, during the last year for the induced pluripotent stem cells, where you take stem cells from, let's say, some adult stem cells from the skin and then uh, incorporate immortality genes and you can induce pluripotent stem cells that are uh, alike embryonic stem cells and can build major cell lines, all major cell lines that um, the human body is containing. And during the past years, it has been found that this incorporation is possible without a viral vector, and it is possible with only one gene with the OCT4. So there is a hope of those cells. And there's another possible cell line which has been rec uh, um, recovered. Um, this is the human cardiac stem cells. Right now we know that the human heart is not finally defined because, uh, and it, is, it can regenerate. In stem cell niche be between the cardiomyocytes, there is stem cells that have stem cell factor, which is CKIT in this point, and can, be, uh, can get cardiomyocytes. They are labeled for connexin 43, which is gap, fun gap junctions later on. So there is cardiac stem cells, and uh, it is the, uh, one of the future tasks to make those stem cells available for cell transplantation, which is not possible at this moment. So back to the title. Is it a real, realistic concept? I think at this moment, no. But there is a fascinating movement and development that has started, and a lot of research. And this reminds me of things that happened some years ago. There was the first human transplant in 67 without deeper knowledge of immunosuppression. Only 10 years later, cyclosporine was found. And so um, a very um, good treatment option became available afterwards. So I come to my conclusions that elderly patients could be optimal candidates to receive cell transplantation and that the autologous cell therapy is not likely to recover the elderly heart fairly patient because the aging autologous cell will have minor effects. Promising cell types and sources are under investigation, and so I hope that in the race between humans, rodents, and zebrafish, we can keep up a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, we have a uh, few minutes for questions. Are there any questions from the audience? Maybe I can start with a, with a general question. Uh, do you expect a more tolerance uh, for uh, cell transplantation in elderly patients as the immune system uh, is a little bit uh, down or not? Actually, I don't think so that they will have more tolerance. I think they will have less tolerance because we know that neonates 
receiving hearts have more tolerance and they, they're in the process of acquiring tolerance. And, um, well, it's all the matter of predefined um, antibodies and the elderly patient will have more of those. I don't think that, um, that this is the solution, that they, they have an impaired immune system or tolerance, tolerance system, better to say. Any one question in the audience? Yes, please. Uh, do you know that uh, knockdown ga alpha gal negative peaks can be a source for uh, stem cells in the future? You mean not uh, engineer, engineered um, cells from xenogenic exactly. origin? Knockdown gal negative. Yeah. Well, it's possible, but uh, with the new inventions in human cells, I don't think it is necessary to go for uh, xenogenic cells and to engineer them. Then you have two, two ethical problems, xenogenic and manipulation of cells. I think it is more likely that we have human cell lines that are engineered in a way, in which way ever we, we are not sure about the, what, what will happen. But um, I, I think we, uh, it is unlikely that xenogenic cells will have a place because of ethical reasons. Thank you. Microphone in the back. Uh, thank you very much for your very interesting lecture. Uh, what are the prospects of restoring electrical connections, do you think, in the elderly, if you do manage to uh, do, uh, be successful with uh, cell therapy? Sorry, I did not understand. Electrical connections between your new cells and the existing cells in the heart. What are the prospects of that? The electric connection. Electrical connection, yes. Well, uh, it was found that for bone marrow cells, it is possible that, the, that they fuse with gap junctions. But, as I said, it's unlikely events. For skeletal marblers, there's actually no, um, exactly. no connection. But it has been showed, even for skeletal myoblasts, that it's possible to incorporate um, the gene for connexin 43 and then a connection and coupling with the host myocardium is possible. But I, I think it is unlikely, um, again, that it is necessary to have a transfection with some factors only for coupling. I think we, it is more likely that cells are manipulated in a way to become real cardiomyocytes, and then the coupling is, uh, well, quite normal. We know it in animals when we transplant cardiomyoblasts, they attach to the heart with gap junctions without any problem. And also embryonic stem cells after transdifferentiation to cardiomyocytes, they do it. May I ask you, um, if you were to use adult uh, stem cells, are there markers that would be available at the time of harvesting to identify the ones that are indeed aged? There are markers. Um, there are markers that have been shown for most available autologous stem cells, uh, whether the aging or, the, well, let's say the function of the cells is good enough, and that's what most clinical, in, it, what is done in most clinical trials. They have um, a diagnostic phase before they transplant those cells. Um, and it is known that most of those factors that actually are available for this diagnostic tool are decreasing with age. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think we uh, have to move on to the second presentation.